Hi there, this is the tutorial on Petrology of Hello. Let's start off by looking at a normal heart on this side of the screen. Okay? So your deoxygenated blood would come through the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava into the right atria. From there, it would go into the right ventricle. It goes across the pulmonary valve into the main pulmonary artery and into the branch pulmonary arteries and into the lungs. From the lungs, it will get oxygenated and they would come back into the left atria through the pulmonary veins. From the left atria, it would then go across the mitral valve into the left ventricle and the oxygenated blood would pump, get pumped into the body through the aorta. So that's your normal circulation. So let's see what happens in Tetralogy of Fallow. In Tetralogy of Fallow, you have a ventricular septal defect over there. If you look at it, it's just below the aorta. The other special feature about Tetralogy of Fallow is that if you look at if you draw a line between the septum and the aorta, 50% of the aorta will be committed to the right ventricle, so that's called the aortic override. The third component would be your right ventricular hypertrophy. As you can see, the right ventricular mass is much more than the LV. That brings us to the last component of the Trollger fellow, which is infundibular pulmonic stenosis. You can see this thick muscle bundle obstructing the flow into the pulmonary artery. As, as a result, the child would become cyanotic. There's excess pressure on the right side, which will cause the shunt to go from the right ventricle into the left ventricle. So, just to recap, the features of uh, Tetralogy of Fallow are aortic override, ventricular septal defect, infendibular pulmonic stenosis, and right ventricular hypertrophy. Now, you need to bear in mind that this is a spectrum of disorder. It's not all children with the Tetralogy of Fallow are the same. For example, if you have a child with very mild degree of pulmonic stenosis here, they would be relatively pink. And if you have a child who has a very tight pulmonic stenosis here, they will be quite blue and might start spelling quite early on. Similarly, if you have very limited, right. Okay, let's look at it, what you would find when you examine these children, okay so you would get a murmur so the murmur is usually an ejection systolic murmur over the pulmonic area and that's not because of uh, the VSD it's usually because of the accelerated flow across the pulmonary artery so it's a pulmonic murmur saturations as I said if it's a pink fallow in the children who has got a reasonably good sized pulmonary artery and very mild degree of pulmonary stenosis they would be quite pink and the sets are likely to be normal on the other hand, uh, at the worst end of the spectrum, if you have uh, severe pulmonic stenosis, they would be quite blue. Now, we all know about the blue spells or the TET spells in which the children go blue all of a sudden. This can be usually treated with oxygen, morphine, and the long-term treatment for that is actually giving beta blockers, bending surgery. So, let's look at uh, an example where uh, uh, the tetralogy of fallow is going blue badly. So you have a pulmonary artery which is quite narrow. So the stenosis here is so severe that the blood can't go into the lung. This is the main pulmonary artery. So what are the ways around it? So the most commonest and traditional method is called the BT shunt. So obviously you know that you have your iota around there. You would essentially put a shunt from one of the branches into the pulmonary artery. So this would then bring blood from the aorta into the pulmonary artery and into the lungs thereby helping the oxygenation so that's called a BT shunt so this is done through a thoracotomy you do not need to go on bypass for this surgery so it's less risky now this is a palliative procedure and this will need full correction at a later stage so this BT shunt is usually done when young infants uh, are having tet spells so it's a palliative procedure so another option obviously is actually putting a stent across the RVOT to bypass this obstruction over there. So that's called your RVOT stent. So that will bypass the obstruction at infendibular level. So a little, little tube just to bypass the obstruction over there. So obviously this will buy you time can also treat prior to getting the BT shunt and the RVOT shunt and we said that we could give beta blocker we normally use propranolol um, for, for this if they're having really bad spell obviously give oxygen and morphine and fluid that would help as well the definitely that definitely treatment is uh, uh, 
something called transannular patch so let's draw a tetralogy of fallow over here so you have your aortic override you have your ventricular septal defect over here you have severe pulmonary stenosis you have muscle bundle over here obstructing your flow so the things we need to do is one to resect the muscle bundle which is obstructing the flow so get rid of that bit and that bit and obviously the surgeon would then put a scissors across the RVOT like that so that's called a trans annular patch type of repair so they essentially put scissors across the pulmonary valve chop 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 all the way to the top and then they will put a patch to augment it then obviously you so you make something just like that you put scissors across open it up put a patch it will look a little bit like that so that's your patch so as you've gone across the valve so that will make your pulmonic valve leaky so that's one complication already and then the third thing to do is obviously to put a patch on this side and close the VSD so that's your uh, TOF repair three main steps of TOF, TOF repair so resecting the bundle trans annular repair and then closing the VSD now that brings us to the complication so you know that uh, we end up so you close the VSD like that so that's your VSD patch you repaired the pulmonary artery with a patch in the process you made this valve very leaky so what's going to happen so the RV will dilate over time so you get RV dilatation so you have poor exercise capacity because your RV is dilated because you put the put scissors across this you're going to get fibrous tissue over there that can predispose you to arrhythmias and then if you look at your pulmonary artery which is repaired further up it can cause later on further upstream the narrowing can recur so for example here can narrow in a few years time so that will need uh, stenting or ballooning in the future so these are the long term complication but realistically they all do reasonably well it's uh, a pretty good outcome I should say